Okay, so today I want to take you through three examples of constant pressure calorimetry. Usually when we talk about calorimetry, we're talking about a reaction occurring uh, inside of an open vessel if we're talking about constant pressure scenarios. And oftentimes the reaction is occurring in water because water is a well-known substance. Okay, so in this first example, uh, we're going to add 50 milliliters of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide to 50 milliliters of 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid. And we find that when we do this, the temperature of the solution increases by 3.3 Kelvin or 3.3 degrees Celsius. So, of course, what reaction is going on here? Nothing but this acid-base neutralization reaction. And so we have sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid. And so when this occurs, the solution gets warm. What does that tell you? That this process is exothermic. In other words, this process right here that I'm writing down releases heat. And so we were asked to find, in this example, we're asked to find delta H for this process. And why do we know we're talking about delta H? Because, again, the whole theme of the day is constant pressure scenarios. Okay. The first thing we might wonder about is, you know, how much reaction are we doing? We know we're mixing uh, 50 mils, 0.5 molar solution. So we say, okay, we have 0.5 zero moles of sodium hydroxide, for example, times 0 0.050000 liters here. And what do we find? We have 0 0.025 moles of reaction. And of course, we have the same amount uh, in terms of molarity and volume-wise of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. So we have 0 0.0 uh, two five moles of reaction going on. Well, why is that important? Well, obviously, the more sodium hydroxide that we add here and the more hydrochloric acid that we add, the, the larger our temperature change is going to be. So if the acid had been more concentrated or the base had been more concentrated, presumably the temperature change would have been even greater. Okay. Well, the main thing that we want to focus on here is that whatever the Q for the reaction is, we first need to find the Q for the water because if we can find the Q for the water we know Q for the water is going to equal minus Q for the reaction. All right, And we're told to assume that the uh, density of the solution is the same as that of uh, water and so we know that we have at the, at the end of the day once we add the two solutions together we have 100.0 grams of solution specific heat capacity again we're told to assume is the same 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius and the temperature change was a positive 3.3 .3 degrees Celsius and so when you work this out you find that the amount of joules that was absorbed by the water is this 1380.7 joules and again that's positive okay the water absorbs heat because the reaction releases heat so that means that the reaction released 1380.7 and some change joules. Okay. And it did that by reacting 0 0.025 moles of reaction. And when we work this out here and change to kilojoules, we round to two sig figs, we get 55 kilojoules per mole. And again, it's more useful to report uh, 55 kilojoules per mole than it is to uh, proclaim this number here because this number is only specific to our exact experimental design whereas the 55 kilojoules per mole we would anticipate to be general to all sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid uh, reactions. Let's move on to our next example. Okay, in this next example, we are told we're going to dissolve ammonium nitrate in water, and we're also told that this is an endothermic process. Of course, we see this when we're given delta H here, and it tells us that this is a positive 25.7. We know that positive sign means that this is endothermic. Anyway, we're asked that uh, to imagine putting 5 grams of ammonium nitrate and dissolving it in 100 grams of water. This water is at room temperature, and we're asked to find the resultant temperature. So the process that's going on here, we have solid ammonium nitrate, and when we dissolve it in water, 
Of course, we're going to make these ammonium ions. And we're going to make the nitrate ions. And we're also going to start absorbing heat from our solution, meaning that the temperature is going to go down. So whatever the temperature is here, final temperature, we don't know yet, but we know that it's going to go down because delta H here is positive, 25.7 kilojoules per mole. So the most, maybe the most obvious question is, how much reaction are we actually doing there? I, I just wrote out the equation for the dissolution. We're only dissolving 5.0 grams. So if we dissolve the whole mole, then we're going to, uh, you know, absorb our, uh, you know, 25 uh, kilojoules uh, or whatever that is. We only are going to dissolve 5 grams, so we only need to worry about a certain amount of reaction here. So for every one mole of ammonium nitrate, that's about 80 grams. And so we find that we are doing 0 0.0625 moles of reaction here. We're also told here that the enthalpy of dissolution here is 25.7 uh, kilojoules. So that's 25,700 joules per mole. So every mole of ammonium nitrate that we dissolve is going to absorb 25.7 kilojoules. And so then we're able to multiply here by the number of moles that we just found and find that in this case there's only going to be about 1606 joules of heat absorbed from the solution. All right, so basically, you know, the amount of ammonium nitrate we put in there depends on how much heat's going to be absorbed here. Well, this is great because uh, now what we know is that if we can find QW, again, QW is going to equal minus Q of the reaction. Well, in this case, we have the Q of the reaction, and we say that, okay, so that means that QW is going to equal minus 1606 joules. Okay, and we have three sig figs so far, so we underline that guy. QW equals minus 1606 joules. And now we know the other stuff associated with QW as far as Q equals MC delta T. So the mass of the solution in this case is 105 grams because we've added that uh, 5 grams of ammonium nitrate in. We're also told to use this 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And even if we're not told, um, we still go ahead and use it in most cases anyway. And what we're asked to find is the temperature change, so delta T. And this is going to equal minus 1606 joules. And it's not too hard to see. Once you, uh, once you go ahead and cancel the units here, you'll see the grams cancels with the grams, the joules cancels with joules on this side and this side. And when we solve for the temperature change, we find that delta T okay, is equal to a minus 3.66 degrees. And then when we find our final temperature, remember delta T was the final minus the initial. Our initial was 25. So we're going to go, you know, we'll start at 25, we're going to drop down 3.66 degrees, and our final temperature, which is what we were asked to find, is 21.3 degrees C. All right, and that's what makes ammonium nitrate such a good uh, thing to use in those instant cold packs that those athletic trainers have, and among other uses there. All right, let's move on to our third and final example for this video. Okay, this is our last example, and this example is probably the most complicated example that we've done today. And uh, in this case, that we're told that we're doing a reaction in uh, hydrochloric acid. We're going to add magnesium metal to this acid. And we see that when this happens, when we add the uh, specified one gram amount of uh, magnesium metal to the 200 grams of hydrochloric acid, that the temperature of the solution increases by 15 degrees Celsius. And this time we're not so lucky as to assume that the container does not absorb heat as we did in our last example. In fact, in this case, we want to find not only the heat that was absorbed by the container, but the heat capacity of the container itself. 
This is a very useful exercise in case we wanted to use that container again tomorrow to do a different reaction. So in this case, you can think of this example as showing you how we might calibrate um, a, a container or, or, or a calorimeter so that we can do an experiment the next time. So the first time you react it with a solution that, you know, or a reaction that we already know the enthalpy change for this reaction, and then tomorrow we can use it to, to find the enthalpy change for a reaction that we don't know about. Okay, so in this case we have Q of the calorimeter plus Q of the water plus Q for the reaction and we're going to assume that these are the only three components that are absorbing heat or, or releasing heat for that matter. So in the last case we gave you know an example of Q1 plus Q2 equals zero. Well now we have Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 and in principle we could add, a, add more uh, terms on here uh, but at some point it becomes uh, you know, just just too much too much work, and we can assume that these are the only three components that are absorbing, releasing heat in our system. These are the three components of our system, and so uh, we just have to solve for each one of these guys independently. Of course, the one that we're really not sure about is this guy here. We don't know how our calorimeter is absorbing heat. We know how much heat the water picked up. Okay, Qw here. Um, we, we, we know that because we know the temperature change for the water. We know the reaction because we're given the enthalpy change. And so really the way that we want to think about this is that QW plus Q of the reaction is going to equal minus Q of the calorimeter. So let's set our sights now on finding QW and Q of the reaction. So for QW, we have 201 grams of solution because we added that one gram of magnesium in there. We know the specific heat capacity of the solution. We're told to assume it's the same as pure water. Uh, and then we know that the temperature change was 15.0 degrees. So we know that QW is equal to one two six one four joules and how many sig figs do we have we have three alright now let's take that uh, result and we'll just add to it and the, on the next slide here we'll try to calculate Q of the reaction well for Q of the reaction I know that I have one gram of magnesium that's reacting so I want to turn that into moles 24.305 mole, uh, excuse me, grams. And then up here I have one mole. The reason I want to find the number of moles is that I was told that every time I do the reaction one mole times, I release 470 uh, kilojoules of heat. And so when I do this, I can cancel the grams and grams and the moles and moles. The other thing I want to want to do is convert this from kilojoules to joules uh, so that I can be sure to be able to add that to my Q water. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. And I find that the Q or the reaction is equal to 19,330, uh, what's that, 337 joules. All right. So now let's kind of recap and, and see where we are. We know that we said that uh, QW plus Q of the reaction was going to equal minus Q of the calorimeter. And so what we need to do now is just kind of plug our numbers that we calculated in. So we had one, two, six, uh, one, four joules. Okay, minus one nine three uh, three seven three three seven joules, and that equals minus Q calorimeter. Uh, when we work this out here, we find that our calorimeter minus six seven seven two joules uh, here, right? So what does this mean? This means that our calorimeter absorbed about 6.7 kilojoules. 
All right, so that's the answer of one of our questions. In other words, if the calorimeter had absorbed no heat, we would have found that, that Q of the reaction was exactly equal to minus uh, Q of the water, but that's not the case. We found that there was a difference between the two. The difference between the two of these is the minus of the Q of the calorimeter. And remember that our calorimeter is in constant contact with the water, so we're going to assume that it's in constantly you know, thermal equilibrium. In, the, in, in other words, this 6,772 joules was absorbed as the temperature changed by 15 degrees for our calorimeter. In other words, we find out that our calorimeter has a calibration constant of 448 joules per degree Celsius. And now tomorrow when we come in the lab, we've already calibrated our instrument, we can go ahead and do a reaction that we are not sure about, that we don't know about. And you might be wondering here, why doesn't the you know, factor of grams show up here? You know, notice that the grams is missing, right? Well, think about this. I don't care what the mass of my instrument is. I don't care what the mass of my calorimeter is because it's going to be the same every day that I do the reaction. So as opposed to a specific heat capacity for a given substance where we might have a lot of the substance one day and the next day we don't have a lot, um, this uh, calorimeter is going to absorb heat in exactly the same way and it's not going to be dependent on the mass um, from day to day. So we don't need to include that factor here uh, in, in our calculations. Okay, well that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a fun day.